to film the Indian Ocean episode. Our team traveled right across these warm tropical waters. Wow, guys, look up, look up, look up. Our most challenging shoot was in the Maldives, filming the elusive close cousins of sharks, manta rays. That is mind blowing. These protected waters are a sanctuary to the largest population in the world. But finding them in this changing ocean proved much more difficult than we ever imagined. It took a crew assembled from across the globe and an experienced local dive team and proved that when filming wildlife, nothing is a given. The Maldives is a paradise destination for tourists and a marine life hotspot. Manta rays here migrate seasonally, following their food, microscopic plankton. This is carried by strong currents that flow east to west and back again. But climate change means the monsoon winds that produce these currents are becoming erratic the whereabouts of the manta's food is becoming unpredictable. And filming the mantas themselves is getting harder. Well, the possibilities are on the west side, it's much more active, which gives uh, favorable conditions for the mantas to actually come inside these channels and clean on the cleaning stations. Leading our search is dive supervisor Ahmed Shamoun. He's been diving with mantas for 25 years. Mantas are beautiful creatures, for sure. For me, seeing an individual which I know from before is like meeting a friend again. We use the traditional Maldivian Dhoni boat for our daily explorations. But our HQ was our liverboard vessel, Blue Shark One. OK, guys, so this is the outside of the atoll. Shamoon advises us to head to the western side of the atolls, towards specific manta gathering sites known as cleaning stations. These could offer good encounters. Shamoon's second in command, Farish Mohammed, heads in to scout for them. We are checking the cleaning station in Nimo Atoll, Kurali Kandu. So far, the mantas have evaded us. Uh, at the moment, nothing, but there's more than one station around the area, so they're going to check the next one. We know of multiple cleaning stations and we'll search as many as needed until we find them. We scout, scout, and then scout some more. No mantas in the cleaning station. We are very unlucky. As our filming days slip away, we're beginning to run out of time. So we've been out here now for about a week, and so far, our search for mantas has not had any luck. We travel to the other side of the atolls, but we're hit by some unseasonal and extreme conditions. But a nearby boat captain has reported seeing mantas on a cleaning station here. Even though the sea state is deteriorating, this could be our only chance. I think this is going to be our last crack. You know, we need to get in the water, get down to the bottom, and then just hope the mantas are around. Let's hope for the best, and the guys underwater, it's all up to you now. <laughs> Check. Whoa! That is quite a current. The flow through here is absolutely extraordinary. If I let go, I'd be gone. At last, we get eyes on a manta. Oh, look up! Isn't that something? 
absolutely exquisite. Nothing moves like a manta. Poetry in motion. It's food that attracts mantas to the general area, but this site offers something different. Clustered around this rocky outcrop are hundreds of small fish that specialize in cleaning larger animals like manta rays. They'll pluck dead skin and parasites off their bodies, even help them to heal their wounds. These mantas are both female. It appears there's a real social function to coming here. These two girls are just hanging out together. While we film our sequence underwater, the conditions for the topside team become very challenging. For series producer Rowan Musgrave, the choppy ocean proves difficult to stomach. How are you feeling, Ro? Sick. Very sick. As we surface, exiting the water now becomes the most dangerous part of our dive. The risks of being swept away or colliding with the hull of the boat are very real. We've captured footage of mantas on cleaning stations, but what we set out to film was their incredible feeding behaviour. The storm subsides and we head to a protected lagoon. The light from our boat attracts plankton, which in turn attracts mantas. Wow. It kind of feels like I've just beamed into an episode of Stranger Things. like this where you have a glut of food the mantas will spin round and round and round in a barrel roll called cyclone feeding creating a vortex with their own bodies channeling the food into their gullets it's simply exquisite These protected waters have enabled the growth of this population. It's the largest in the world, and they're resident all year round. But life beyond this safe haven is dangerous. Just to the east of here is Sri Lanka. And there is the biggest manta ray fishery on the planet. Mantas are targeted for their meat, but more importantly, for their gill rakers, which are believed to have a function in traditional medicine. In less than 100 years, the global population of mantas is thought to have halved. We have really no knowledge about what these creatures are doing when they are moving up and down on the outskirts of these atolls. So if they go out into the open ocean and meet one of these fishermen, they are going to get into trouble. But here, within the borders of this sanctuary, mantas can roam, find food, and reproduce in relative safety. The future for mantas here in Mali looks good. I think it's going in the right direction. It gives you hope, and it's proof that conservation works. What we need now is more of the world's oceans protected as they are here. And if that can happen, then there is still a future for sharks.